Hi there. Well, this is the silk wrap video for anyone who is interested in how I do mine or if they would like to do their own. Now, I am not a professional. This is just what I have learned to do over the last few years with trial and error. So I thought I would share what I had learned and if anyone is interested in doing this, here we go. So this is the main products that I use that you're going to need. You are quite welcome to use different silks, but this is the one that I prefer. I bought this silk off of Amazon. Now this silk is just silk. It does not have adhesive. You can get the adhesive back at your uh, local Sally Beauty, but this one is just silk. No adhesive, no nothing. Then you'll need your lightless gel, and then you'll need the gel cure. This is what sets the gel in just a few seconds. Then the other supplies that you need will be a sanding block that has, uh, uh, it's not quite a soft grit, it's just above a soft grit. And I'm can, trying to remember what this one is, but I can't remember. This came from Sally Beauty, and this is the number of this particular sanding block. This one's my favorite grit. Then you'll also need a very, very heavy grit. And that is for sanding down the final tip, which is what I'm going to be putting on my pinky, to the desired length. Then you'll need your favorite nail file for shaping, and I'm going to be using my crystal. This one is uh, the one that I did a review on. If anybody's interested in that, look up the review section. I'll try to remember to put that video link in the description box. And last but not least, you'll need a pair of tweezers. Now, these are the ones that I use because they have that bend in them, and the reason that I use them is for keeping the nice C-curve, and I just gently hold as the the gel sets. Okay, so let's get started. First of all, and forgive me, this is probably going to be a long video. I'll try to make it as informative and slow as possible. Okay, so let's go ahead and get a piece of this cut. And what I usually do when I'm using my silk is I just cut a strip. And what I do is I try to cut it so that it will fit my thumb and then it fits all my other fingers. Let me pull that out just a bit more. So, okay, I need my big scissors. That makes it a whole lot easier. So figure out how wide you want it. And you need sharp scissors to cut this. Dull scissors will not cut it. And it likes to wiggle. Doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. Now we will put that away and then what I do is I just keep one of these strips, save your pieces. So to put a wrap, <clears throat> whether it's on this one or this one, and I'm going to be doing this one, I'm going to cut a piece that's just wide enough to go over my nail. And when you're cutting these, always cut them longer than you need. You can always take it off, but you can't put it back on. So I'm going to cut a width that I know is larger than my pinky. And again, you have to have sharp scissors to cut this if you want a nice straight line. So I'm using my squeezy scissors as Leroy calls them. Okay, then I just stash this little guy inside my lid and I keep it there for my next application. Now when I'm doing this, this usually lasts about two to three weeks. So I'm going to be doing this in steps and then I'm going to cut away for the drying times. So using my glue, and you can use any glue you like, but this is the glue that I prefer and the reason that I prefer this one is because it's a gel resin so it just strengthens the bond. I don't put any um, drying agents or anything like that on there. All I do is, and I have got, got a coat of that stuff on there, so all I do is clean my nail really well, and that is a grubby pad. <laughs> so with a little acetone, I'm going to clean off anything that might be on my nail. That way it's nice and clean and dry. I don't buff it, I don't sand it, I don't do anything. All I do is just clean it off really, really good. And the reason I don't do that is because I found out over the last few years, 
I've got something on my nail here, um, that it didn't really help the silk stay on any better. So what I do is, using my glue, I'll put a little coat of glue on there. Forgive my hand in front of the camera. Doesn't have to be a super heavy coat. that out of the way and then take your patch. Now the trick to this is laying it on flat and what I do is I try to line it up with a flat edge on the farthest edge away because that's the one that you can't see. See that? Just set it down and then gently, ooh, I picked it up. See that? Okay, so now we're going to use a different one. Now when I do that, I don't keep the same one because it stretches it and then it tweaks it and it looks really awful. So I'm glad I made that mistake because then you guys got to see, don't do that. <laughs> like I just did. Okay. Now... Just a tiny bit more glue because it's partly dry. Sorry baby, I know I'm running away from the camera again. So flat edge on that side and then just gently push it down so that it touches. Just like that. Now any excess that might be touching your skin, you have to get rid of that. So I'm going to cut that corner off because I don't need that corner. Sorry, I'm trying to do this at an odd angle for me. That little piece is not necessary. Now, this is where I told you I'm going to need the dry time. So I am going to leave this alone. Oh, thank you, baby. I'm going to leave this alone. and let this completely dry and then what I do is I come in and I brush backwards to make sure that that whole thing is sealed in there especially that top edge and this edge and I go ahead and I run glue all the way across the silk Now, we're going to let that dry, and as it dries, I'm gently going to hold those corners so that when it dries, it dries in a nice curve. Don't get your fingers stuck. It takes a few minutes for it to set up. So while this finish is drying, um, I'm going to cut away and I'll be back to show you the next step. Okay, so I have this one all dry and it's all set and ready to go. And I went ahead and I applied one here onto this tip to protect that split. And then I went ahead and I put one on my thumb because I'm very abusive to my thumbnail. <laughs> that just protects my nails. Okay, so now I need to show you the magic tool. On occasion, this little guy right here gets plugged. That tip clogs up with some of the, uh, the gel resin. So here's the magic tool. It's a paper clip. <laughs> but it works perfect if your tip gets plugged, just like that. Pulls out anything, and then all I do is I take one of my cottons, and then using a little bit of acetone, I wipe it off. That way it doesn't uh, get all gummed up. Just like that. So, a magic tool, girls. Now, let's go ahead and apply. Now, I'm not going to show you how to spray this on camera, but what you want to do is you want to hold your nail all by itself and give it about 8 inches distance when you give it a squirt. Now, I usually do one or two sprays. This is a bottle, an empty bottle, and what I did was I just put acetone in this. This is just straight acetone. And you use this 
to clear off or to spread the resin. So here's how it goes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little drop and I always start with a drop towards the tip. Now, take that guy right there and pull off the excess. You don't want that excess. And then gently spread this. Doesn't have to be perfect this first time, but the smoother you have it the first time, the smoother the whole thing will be. There we go. Now I don't take it all the way up. All I want is this first one just to strengthen that silk. Now we're going to give that a spray. I'm going to do eight inches, one or two sprays. So give me just a second. Okay, now I don't know if you can see that reaction. So I'm going to bring that up and see if you guys can watch that. Now this is where I would come in with my tweezers to help hold the shape. Just like that. This fingernail unfortunately is slightly odd. It was broken when I was a kid. So it's a bit of a challenge. But you have a few minutes to shape your tip and you want that nice round C. See that C curve there? That's what you're after is that C curve right there. So if it doesn't look exactly perfect or you hate it, just take it off and start all over. A little bit of acetone, a little bit of work, and you've got it. Now, I like to let this set up completely between applications. I usually do two to three coats depending on the nail. And since this one is going to be all by itself, and I have a bump there so I have to squeeze this, girls. Um, it, since it's going to be a tip all by itself, I will do three thin coats. So the first one, just the tip. The second one, I pull it back towards the cuticle just a little bit more. And then on that third coat, I put all of it here and then I gently spread it, bringing it up to have a nice, smooth, even coat. That way you don't have a bunch of bumps. Well, okay, hopefully you don't have a bunch of bumps. So, the tweezers are to protect your fingers from that uh, gel. because you only have a few minutes to shape it. Once it's set, it's set. And then you don't have any other time, so you would either take it off or live with it. So I'm going for that C shape, so I just use my tweezers to shape it. Okay, so not too bad. Now, let's put one more on. I would normally wait, but since you guys are watching, I'm going to go ahead and put my next coat on. Just a tiny bit. Pull the excess off. Now this is where I was telling you, you spread it across the tip, and this is where you start pulling it back. So I'm going to go up a little higher on this second one. Don't get it on your skin. If you do, pull it off. Okay, so now we're time for our second coat. I know it looks really ugly, but believe me, it'll work. I'll be right back. Okay, second coat. So now, again, because that side right there is tweaking on me, I am going to hold it where I want it to be. Part of this will come off. Part of this length will come off. I'll file it down. Okay. 
Now this time I will actually let it completely set up, completely harden, which is going to be about five to ten minutes. And then I will put my third coat on and I'll be back to show you how I sand it nice and smooth. Okay, so I got the third coat on. It's completely set and hard. Now, I used that heavy grit in order to file it down. And I'm going to use my block as my base. And basically, I just filed it straight across until I was happy with the length. And you got to use the heavy grit on this, but be very careful and make sure it is completely hardened and set. Don't do it before then. So. Then, once I have it to the desired length that I want, then I use my glass file, and this is going to be very difficult because I normally do this like this. So, this is when I use my file to shape it and give it the uh, desired curves or whatever you prefer. Then once you've got it down to where you like it, this is where the sanding block comes in. So now if you guys can see that ridge right there and then in the light, if you can see it in the light, the dimples, you can probably see them on this one also. And then you can see them on my thumb. So we need to smooth that out. So this is what I do. Very carefully, do not file your own nail. Just the gel. And the more you do this, the better you'll get at it. But if you remember to start at the tip and with each coat, just work back a little bit farther and a little bit farther. It becomes a very smooth and easy to sand. Now this one I took back way farther than I usually do. I normally only come to about here. But because this is just the tip, I came back quite a ways. So I have to very carefully sand until I have the whole thing smooth. Doesn't take a whole lot of sanding. And then look up the tip, feel, if you have any bumps, sand it a little bit more. If it feels pretty smooth, then you're done. And that's pretty much all you do. So let me sand this one really quick, since we're sanding. And all I'm doing is taking off the edges. And this just protects my tips. And see again. Look up the down the down the nail and make sure you don't have any funny bumps. If you feel any bumps, just sand it a little bit more. And I have feel a funny bump right over here. There, nice and smooth. And then that's done. So now my protect my tips are protected and I'll finish shaping this one a bit. And now I have a little bit more sanding to do over here. And then it'll be nice and smooth. And when it's painted, no one will even notice. So there is silk wraps and how to put a tip on a broken nail. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this helps you. If you have any questions, uh, drop us a comment and we'll answer it. Until next time.